guys today. Good to see you. Every time I see you, I feel I get goosebumps. Uh, thank you. Good to see you. God bless you for all your hard work. Thank you.
Bible says you come from God, the Creator. They have all kinds of degrees that can be hung on the bathroom wall and used to wipe yourself. And yet they don't not God. If you are a highly intelligent person with wisdom and you yet do not know God, the Bible calls you a fool. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. And what were we teaching you with amplification? How to be wise. How to know. How to understand what? How to get to heaven. Well, how do I get to heaven? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, and that takes away religion. You say, well, no, listen, there's, there's no one here. Will you go home and shut up? No, we're, we're going to preach to the one, to the two, to the few, as much as the many. I see new faces that have not ever heard the gospel on this spot. So you can have wisdom of the world and have no knowledge of God. I hope and pray you have both. I hope you are an intelligent person and you say that Jesus Christ is your Savior, God created you, and everything that you are and everything you do is blessed by God. But that's a few of the fewest. And the wisdom of God is Jesus Christ. The wisdom into heaven is Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. The blood of Christ. For after that in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. First Corinthians chapter 1, 21 says that what I am doing to you right now is foolishness. So we can agree on one thing right now, that the preaching is foolish. Now if I can get you to believe the other part, that the message is power. Come on, it's quite weird to have somebody scream and yell at you every Saturday morning. But we're not screaming. We're not hollering. As people come up and tell us what we're doing, we are proclaiming the power of God through Jesus Christ. There's all kinds of things you can scream about on the streets. You can scream about a parade coming. Hey, ticker tape. But what's that going to do about your soul? What power is that going to get you in the eyes of God? When you worship another man. When you worship a thing. And you lift up your voice in great praise over something that is of no importance in eternity like the follow. You see, the Bible says that there is an afterlife after death. You will live after you die. As a matter of fact, according to the Bible, you really don't die. If you are saved, born again, Bible-believing Christian, that last breath, you are present with the Lord. If you do not believe Jesus Christ as your Savior, that last breath, and they wake up in a place called hell. Now, wouldn't you care about your eternal soul more than hear someone else talking about sports? And I'm using sports because sports uses application, and what they do is for foolishness. Yay, your, your team won whatever it is, the pennant, the ring, the goal, whatever it is. What's that really do for you? Who cares card number 49 comes across a checkered line first? What does that really do for you? And yet if I were to lift up my voice and say, Jesus died according to the scriptures and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. What can that do for you? If you to believe on that, you will go to heaven 
after you die. That's what it would do for you. It's a victory through Jesus Christ that can be a victory for eternal life of your soul. It's a double victory. And it will not cost you anything. God paid the price for your soul. And it's remarkable that what you think about what we do, preaching, is exactly what the Bible says. If you were to come up to me or my family and say, that is completely foolish what he's doing. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, no, 21. And we would reply to that, yes, we believe you. But the power of God is not foolishness. Your favorite children's kiddie songs are about preachers. Not only did Noah build the ark, but he preached to the people. Not only did Jonah get eaten by that whale, he preached to the Ninevites. It's a Bible conclusion that Enoch, before he was raptured, he preached. Abraham preached. Moses preached. Aaron preached. Jesus Christ preached. Jesus Christ preached to more than 5,000 multitudes of people, and they heard what he had to say. And you want me to tone down so you cannot hear that would be unscriptural for you not to hear God's message. So let's see what else the Bible has to say. For the Jews require a sign. Oh, God, show me something. Are you of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Are you somebody called a Gentile? You have no right to ask God for a sign. That's not your capability. That is not what you are here for by God to show you a sign. And then the signs are out in the church age because we have a completed Bible. There are no more signs with the completed 66 books of the Bible. Today you must believe on God Jesus Christ by faith with nothing else. I'm not going to do a magic show. I am not going to give you hamburgers. I'm going to give you the preaching of the cross of Jesus Christ and that alone. Because I would sure hate to persuade you to believe in the magic or the hot dogs rather than God. John chapter 6. The Bible says they followed Jesus. Jesus. Oh, great, Jesus. And Jesus said, and not complete the verse, but Jesus, you only follow me because I fed you. That's the only reason why you're here. Because you want more bread. And I'm going to give you bread, the bread of life, and they rejected it. So Jews require a sign. Tell that to your charismatic church. Signs of healing, signs of tongues, blah, 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 blah. And you're not Jewish, shut up. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and none of that other nonsense of religion fooled by Satan. And the Greeks, that would be us, Gentiles, seek after wisdom. You are to approach God and God, what do I need to know to get to you? And God would answer, like he did Cornelius, Acts chapter 10. God sent an angel to Cornelius, and that angel told Cornelius, go get a preacher. And let that preacher preach wisdom to you. And Peter preached Jesus Christ in the gospel. Oh, tell me about the truth. 
tribulation period. Tell me about the signs of the ends of the time. Hurricane Emma, Jesus is coming. No. You ought to know about the wisdom of how to get to heaven first, and that's by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. If you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will not get any more wisdom. You will not get any more knowledge. You will get no understanding of the holy if you reject God's gift, Jesus Christ. You see, without Jesus Christ, you do not have the Holy Spirit. I will say again, if you have rejected Jesus Christ as your Savior, you do not have the Holy Ghost. And Jesus told us not only is he the comforter, but he's the teacher. And you cannot be learned if you do not have the teacher. And the way to get the teacher, the Holy Spirit, is by believing on Jesus Christ by faith. Don't come to me and say, I got the Holy Spirit and I can mumble jumble and everything else upside down on my head 13 times. The absence of the belief on Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. But the absence of that, God does not know you and you do not know God. I don't care what religion you come from. I don't care what belief you have. If it's not Jesus Christ, you will burn in hell for all eternity. Was the last time that was preached on a Sunday morning? That's wisdom, folks. Without Jesus Christ, you will burn for eternity. That is wisdom from the Bible. It's the truth. We preach Christ crucified. The gospel, Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. I'm not going to preach about let's all get together and sing the Coca-Cola song. Let's all hold hands and have peace. Let's get together for world peace. Let's get together for to save every whale and platypus around. We're not here for that. We're here to preach that Jesus Christ died for your sins, and you need to believe on the Christ that died. And if you have anything else but the death of Jesus Christ, you think you are better than Jesus Christ. And the finished work wrought by God, that he was buried and arose again according to the Scriptures. Oh, preacher, my church is better than Jesus. The hell with your church. The hell with your religion. Because that's where you will go if you die into hell with what you believe, if it's outside Jesus Christ. That's wisdom. That's preaching. The preaching you are getting today was settled in early Christian America. On the streets of the cities was the word of God proclaimed called the Great Revivals. Today you got, you know, the great number one, the super meal. That's what that is today. You got the great baloney in the religion today. You need not baloney, you need the lamb. You need the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block. Oh, you Jews hate when you hear Jesus. I know of a family right now that preaches in Jerusalem. They're getting beaten. Their cameras are getting taken and slammed on the wall. They're getting fists in their face by God's people. And we've even had hatred from Daytona Beach, Florida, about preaching about Jesus. Why is there such a name that makes you angry? Why is there such a name that when we pack up, you, you clap your hands, finally, you shut up? There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12. We came by here, and we could have turned around and went home. Ah, uh, there's no one here. Who cares? Your soul cares. Your eternal life cares. If this man could stand for whatever he's standing for with elections, more power to him. Whatever he believes in, we should be able to stand here and preach Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is...
in any election. When was the last time you ever had a ballot in America, a Christian nation? And it says, for the President of the United States, we want Jesus Christ. What would you do if you were even to write that name in? The media would mock you. You're a Christian nation, but you'd rather have a man rule you. You don't want the man Christ Jesus. Things would be a lot different in America if you let Jesus take the Oval Office. Through prayer to the King James Bible. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness again. There you go. You are right. What we are doing is foolish. Stupid. Ignorant. Why don't you shut up? No, because we're preaching the power of salvation. We're preaching about your eternal life. That's important. And if you were to believe on Jesus as your Savior, that would be the power of eternal hope.
and bring it to the Father by faith and belief on what the finished work of Jesus Christ is. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. From what? Hell. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's power. And without Jesus Christ, you do not have that power to get to God. Verse 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confirm the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confirm the things which are mighty. You see this book in my hand that I'm preaching from called the Bible? What do you think of it? You think it's foolish? You think it's just a book that men wrote? And yet, in the very pages of the King James 1611 Bible is life and power. What you must do to be born again. This is a book of wisdom. Now, it may not tell you how to change your spark plugs. It might not tell you how to uh, clean a house, but it can tell you how to get access to God the Father. And it tells you that access is by Jesus Christ alone. And when you stand before God, the books will be open. And one of them books will be the Bible. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus said, My word shall never pass away. How to and magazine books will burn up one day. Libraries will be destroyed. The watchtower burn in the gates of hell. But the Bible will survive all. And the Bible that will be in eternity will be written. These things have I written unto you that you may know. These things have I written unto you that you that believe on the Son and the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. There is power in this Bible. I've been saved since 1987, serving the Lord, and I know this Bible. Is hated, is feared, is rejected. But if I were to bring any other book, the power of God, the wisdom of God is Jesus Christ, the Word. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. If God had any foolishness in Him, and I doubt He does, that would be smarter than any smart man in all the world. You don't realize all your chemical formulas of chemistry came by God. 
It just took you many years to find it. All your mathematical formulas of algebra and calculus was already there by God. You just took forever to get to it. God knew the diameter of the earth before he even flew any spaceship. And he recorded it in his word before the spaceship that the earth hangs on nothing. So when man went out of space and they looked out the portholes and said, Wow! There's no turtle. There's no strings attached. It wasn't until the Civil War that man took to the Bible and said, let's wash our hands before we do surgery. That's a pretty long time, my friends. You know how many women were diseased and babies killed? Because the doctors would take care of a patient that had a disease and then go move to deliver a baby without washing their hands. But the law of God says, wash your hands. Man is quite stupid when it comes to the Bible. So you know what God gives you for your stupidness? He gives you the thing of a man preaching to you as foolishness. He's giving you what you, des you deserve. He's giving you just desert. But you better hear that preacher and that foolishness because what he's preaching about Jesus, it is power. It is your life. It is your death. You are so foolish that you are buying fruits and vegetables from God, but you ain't thanking God for them. Let's send water and food to Puerto Rico. No, let's send God and Jesus Christ in the Bible. That's what the Puerto Ricans need. Jesus Christ. I bet you the Catholic Church ain't helping Americans. I guarantee the Pope is not helping those people. But Jesus Christ will. You never heard a preacher say some things, have you? The base things of the world and the things which are despised. <laughs> I know that many of you despise me. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 28. You think I'm a fool, and you despise me. You didn't know that was in the Bible, did you? You didn't know what well, I preached about it before, but your mocking is in the Bible. Proverbs chapter 1, I preached about that before, called Scorner. You see, when God equipped me to go out in the world and preach the gospel, He already told me what you're going to do and not do. So you don't surprise me. And you think because you're going to walk up to me, you scare me, or you're too loud, you think I'm going to pack up and go away. <laughs> you're a fool. Because I got power. I got the greatest news ever to be news, and no matter what happens in your life, that Jesus saves. All occasions. Any problem you got, I got it. It's Jesus Christ. He will save your soul from hell. Well, I've got problems right now. Well, the greatest problem you'll have if you die without Jesus and go to hell, that will overclaim any problem you've got on this earth today. you got pain? Well, a pharmacist might be able to take care of your pain. You won't get rid of the torment in hell. you got separation anxiety? Wait till you're placed in hell. No one will like you.
that no flesh shall glory in his presence. I am not going to walk up to God and give God a high five and say, what's up, dude? You are not going to walk up to God and say, hey, the old man upstairs. If you approach the presence of God, you're going to do it by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. There's no other way to God. Our God's a consuming fire. And if you approach God in your sin, that fire will be hell. God is not in hell. But you will be without God. To be in the presence of God, you must not be in the flesh. You cannot have a fleshy religion. You cannot approach God by a priest. That's flesh. You cannot approach God by your pastor. That's flesh. Well, if I go to the Virgin Mary, that's flesh. What about Jesus? 100% God, 100% man. No one else like him. You got a sin problem. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. You see, I have believed on Jesus Christ. I have got God's wisdom. And righteousness. I have got the righteousness of Jesus Christ and not of my own. And sanctification. You know what makes me separate from you, the world? The blood of Jesus Christ. And you know how I can prove that? When the rapture happens, if you're left behind, you have no wisdom, you have no righteousness, you have no sanctification. You will be left behind. Why? Because you have not believed on Jesus Christ. You are not His. And redemption. Jesus Christ paid for my soul. He washed my sins away in His blood. Nothing else you can do to be saved. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now notice. If I were to give you a pop quiz today. What name did I mention for the name of salvation? And you don't even know who I am. And it doesn't matter who I am. Because I am nothing without Jesus. I am a sinner saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am one that has tasted of the waters of life. And I need not that water ever again. I am satisfied with the bread of life. And I do not hunger after righteousness by tasting of Christ. I have got the Word. It's in writing. 
signs and sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ. I've got a hope that's eternal. How are you doing? You're eyes in the streets of America today, you don't realize that someone can pull a gun out right now and send you off eternity. Last Sunday, somebody was walking to their car in the church parking lot and they woke up in eternity. I don't know where they went. Somewhere they woke up in eternity by a bullet. Somebody one day was in the, uh, a building. And a 6.7 earthquake hit. Now there's somewhere, somewhere in eternity. We had a hurricane. And some people decided to run their generator in their house. Now they are in eternity. You know, your eternity could may begin right here at the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market. You don't know. That little vessel that's traveling in your blood right now may reach to your heart in a moment. Your heart may say, I've had it. Your plate is dragging. Your heart may say, that's it, I'm done. Your brain may say, I don't want to work no more. And you may not die, you may be a vegetable where you cannot comprehend any more anything as the day about thinking. And incapable of ever to think about your soul. Your brain may decide, hey, I don't want to remember anything no more. You could be in such a medical state that you could never decide of yourself to believe on God or not to believe on God. Or death may come. Now, it may, but it's definitely going to come. You will face death. And why you're going to die is because you're a sinner. And yes, what we do is foolish. But what we preach is power. Now, this is the message that the Lord laid on my heart this yesterday afternoon. I had no one in mind. God says, you see what you just read? I said, yep. Preach it. And I told God this morning, I said, God, it's raining. God said, preach it. I said, Lord, there's no one here. Turn around and go home. God said, preach it. I don't want him. No one here. Someone here is for this message that I know for God. Because, what did it say? No flesh shall glory in his presence. The flesh of mine said, don't do it. And God said, do it. Lift up Jesus Christ. He's coming. And when he comes back the second time, he will not be that baby in the manger. He will be a hungry, devouring lion of the tribe of Judah. He will come with revenge upon your soul. Because we preach the gospel. 
And don't worry about the people in Africa. I know there are missionaries over there. Worry about the people that have heard the gospel today, September 30th, in Daytona Beach, Florida. Worry about them souls. And then let God come into your heart by the faith and belief of Jesus Christ, salvation by the blood of the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world, and then you can worry about missionaries in Africa. But right now, your soul. I'm not talking about save the sea turtles or the manatees. I'm talking about saving your soul through the blood of Jesus Christ. Forget about the turtles. Save the whales for dessert. Chop up the whales and feed them to the Puerto Ricans. They need food. But your soul, Jesus Christ died for. I didn't like that comment you make. I don't care. God did not die for animals. Animals do not go to heaven. Animals do not go to hell. But humans will go to heaven by Jesus Christ, and they will go to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. That is wisdom. And many Americans don't know that, even in Daytona Beach, Florida. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. You without Jesus Christ have a very fragile soul, and it's able to be perished. It's able to be saved by blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. That's all I can do. And the preaching is foolish. But the message is not. Listen to what Jesus has done for you and believe.